Welcome everyone to uh, this uh, this week's lesson. Today we're looking at Wait on the Lord, and this is the last lesson in our psalm series. And we sort of needed this piece before the storm as we're going into the storm, the great controversy storm, in our next uh, Sabbath school lesson series. So I want to welcome you as we go through the Bible. And before we do, let's have a quick word of prayer. All right. Yeah. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to meet, to record that it would be benefiting those who study in advance, those who want to look through the highlights of the lesson. And Lord God, as we dive into the book of Psalm, filled with emotions of those who were close to your heart, who walked with you, may our experience would be enriched. Amen. Amen. So as we get into the lesson, we are introduced to waiting on the Lord, and the theme text is Psalm 27, verse 14. That's our memory text. The memory text says in Psalm 27, 14, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And so there's a call for us to wait patiently for God to wait on him. And to wait, you can think of, when I think of waiting, I think of almost like a waiter waits on someone to hear from them and to serve them and to get direction from them and to get what they want or need. Um, but we as Christians, we're, we're waiting on God. Yes, we're sort of um, attending to what he wants to share with us, but we're also people who are waiting in hopeful expectation for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come. And so as we look at uh, today, this, this waiting on the Lord is not just some idle expectancy, but it's an active, uh, active waiting, a waiting where we are expecting the coming of Jesus and working to prepare um, to meet him and to prepare others to meet him too. So it's not an attitude of laziness. Not it's attitude. not an attitude Let's let's just do nothing. Mm -hmm. And um, those who have teachers quarterly, they notice that there's many Hebrew words which we translate with one word in English, wait. Mm -hmm. The one in particular here used is kava. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is not a word that is used every day on the street. Mm -hmm. um, those who travel to Israel, to Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, when they see Israeli and they're very impatient, mm -hmm. argue with each other. You would hear from the windows of, of cab drivers or bus drivers, haka, haka, mm -hmm. and that's wait. Yeah. So it's that kind of wait, let me. But here it's a different term, it's a caveat term, which is to look for, mm -hmm. to be expectant, to hope, mm -hmm. okay? And the a verse that comes to my mind is how Apostle Paul in letter to Romans chapter 9, verse um, 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Yeah. So it's that eager waiting, active mm -hmm. waiting. It's that expectancy. So we want to highlight to our viewers today that we're looking at this blessed hope, the expectation that we have mm -hmm. in soon coming of Lord Jesus. But of course, this passage, I don't think, is just referring to the second coming. I think it's referring also to waiting on the Lord mm -hmm. when we are going through trials and such. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the most difficult things in our lives, isn't it? When we are going through a period where someone is seriously sick or we have, uh, we're living surrounded by war, mm -hmm. such as some places of the world today, or when we're going through serious financial difficulties, it's really not easy sometimes to wait up on the Lord and just be patient, is it? Mm -hmm. It's interesting you bring us into today's reality. Mm -hmm. Last Sabbath, Elder Scott was preaching sermon here or mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and we could be so expecting there mm -hmm. when Christ comes mm -hmm. that we forget, as Randy pointed out, that we should wait for him here yeah. in our daily situations and struggle. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully as we look at different subjects of this week's lesson, we would also keep that in mind mm -hmm. of waiting for God to show up in our daily situations. Yeah. I also like the fact in our memory verse here, it says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And, you know, a few years ago, I was doing research on uh, some of the early pioneers of our mm -hmm. church and something, and the letters that they would send back, their reports of the progress of the church to the conference leadership. And every, almost every time they would end the report with, we are all of good courage. 
-hmm. you know, which is uh, resembling this phrase here, be of good courage. And God wants us to be of good courage, I think, during these periods of trial. Amen. And I should introduce to our audience, you know, we're taking for granted that Randy is here with us. <laughs> this is the first time he's in this panel since we started recording in the studio. And Elder Randy has been in this church much longer than both of us have been. Mm -hmm. He's been the first elder for a number of years, and he's known as a historian of this mm -hmm. church. He prepared and produced the book for the centennial of this church, and mm -hmm. he worked on the research for the panels and so on. And I tell you, you're right, Randy. When we read some of those old issues of the Canadian Union Messenger, it's inspiring. Mm -hmm how through all kind of difficulties, they kept moving forward, knowing that God will grow this church. Yeah. Yes. And they had a lot of difficulties. <laughs> yes. You, you know this text well. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if they would wait, if they would know the troubles that, <laughs> that we are in right now. But again, so it's both waiting for God to show up today and waiting for Jesus when he comes to resolve all these things. Yeah. So we're moving to Sunday lesson with that reflection on the call to waiting. Mm -hmm. And the lesson highlights that there's a number of Psalms, 27, 14, 37, 7, uh, verse 9 and 34, Psalm mm -hmm. 39, verse 7, Psalm 40, verse 1. So this concept of waiting and invitation is there. And we already kind of jumped to Romans chapter 8 because that chapter talks about how the nature groans in waiting mm -hmm. that anticipation is there and we determine already that this waiting is not a passive one mm -hmm. but it's an active waiting mm -hmm. and so the question that is there for us you know uh, what are the things that we are waiting mm -hmm. from god and that brings us to what <clears throat> randy suggested let's look into here and now today what are we waiting from god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would be your answers? What are you waiting, Ben, or Randy? We're waiting for a lot of individual, uh, God to resolve a lot of individual problems that were, are existing in our lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we, I was just looking at Psalm 37, 9, it says, rest, rest in the Lord, wait, or sorry, uh, yeah, Psalm 37, 7 and 9, wait patiently for him and do not fret. And that's what I experience sometimes. And when I'm waiting for the Lord's, uh, you know, I really fret about the, the God, why aren't you doing something? When are you going to do it? You know, mm. and mm -hmm. we learned that's why the psalmist is telling us to learn to be more patient. Mm -hmm. these Interesting. Ben, what are you waiting for God? Oh, what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for my health to improve. I'm waiting for my sister-in-law to, you know, get a get a job. Mm -hmm. So there's things I'm waiting for in life, like those things, answers to prayer. Answers to prayer, yeah. okay. Yeah. You know, you mentioned Psalm 37. I want to jump to a couple of verses earlier from verse 4. Okay. Look at the parallelism. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And so to me, that verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in his way, is, is an answer to that verse 4. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's wait while enjoying now. Mm -hmm. Okay, delight in the Lord even now. While you're waiting for him to give you more, you should delight in him even now. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's, that's important for us to reflect on this. And that implies that we should be uh, finding our enjoyment and peace and following God's plan. If you're delighting in God, that means you're really invested in God's plan for your mm -hmm. life and you know, His will. Um, back to the fret not portion that was mentioned, fret not, that implies a level of self-control, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So as we're doing, we have to actually have this practice of self-control and endurance. You know, I, I will jump to Isaiah because verse 9, this <laughs> waiting on the Lord, says those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's, it's significant because if you go there to Isaiah, mm -hmm. um, I believe it's chapter 57 there. And uh, the focus there on this waiting is in verse 13. He who puts trust in me shall possess the land. 
So this waiting mm -hmm. is requiring trust. Yeah, so there's a faith experience there. Yeah. 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 Um, it's not an empty expectations, waiting, not sure. Mm -hmm. It's waiting, knowing, trusting that he will do what he promised. Yeah. So and, it's an exercise of faith. Yeah. Uh, yeah right. And there's actually another important, uh, famous passage actually in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And this was actually used in the introduction to the uh, movie Hacksaw Ridge. And mm -hmm. it reads, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. It's another uh, interesting aspect of waiting upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you consider how impatient we are. You know, sometimes we call someone and they don't answer immediately. Mm -hmm. And and we can say, okay, I'll wait a bit mm -hmm. longer. And then when they don't answer, we get upset or we start emailing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and then I experienced that this week. I've sent an email and literally a minute after I said send, the person called and said, let's meet, you know, oh, yeah, what if I would have waited a bit longer, mm -hmm. you know, we have a story in the Bible, I remember of King Saul losing mm -hmm. his blessing, yeah. why? Because yeah, he was impatient and decided to rush ahead. Didn't want to wait. Mm -hmm. yeah. Samuel was coming, Samuel was on his way, mm -hmm. and yet Saul ended up doing something that he was not permitted to do, he was not qualified to do, Right. and he jumped to that just because he could not wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I didn't think we we're going to spend more time on this, but it's important perhaps for us to, to pause, and we'll be talking about Sabbath later on, but to pause and in our busy lives say, it's not a loss of ambition. It's not a loss of drive. Perhaps it's just that, trust in God. Mm -hmm. And when things are not happening, when we expect them to happen, just wait a bit longer yeah. and see what God will do. Yeah, mm -hmm. Like a test, you know, God's testing your faith. Mm -hmm. It involves yeah. perseverance too. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we can't give up easily. And it re involves a deep longing for God, but not a, a re presumpt presumption of God's will mm -hmm. in our lives either. Yeah. And, and so that waiting also <laughs> is something that is expected from the righteous. Mm -hmm. Wicked are always compared like the, the sea waves tossed. Yeah. And the righteous are at peace. They know how to wait for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's the righteous who inherit the earth. And here it says those who wait will inherit the earth. So it's that parallelism, you mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. that is significant for us. If you're really righteous, well, that righteousness maybe is determined by your trust in God. Mm -hmm. That in his time, he will make all things beautiful. Let's go to the next lesson here on peace of a weaned child. Here the focus is on Psalm 131, and this one touches me because I have a young child and a, another one on the way, and so I know all about that weaning is important. Um, in Psalm 131, it's a song expressing childlike trust and humble resignation. It doesn't mean like you're resigned and lazy and sitting back, but the idea is a resignation to God's will. You're saying, I'm open and I'm just letting God to get into my life. Now, God's people, they live in a world that afflicts the faithful and a world full of temptations and hardships for almost everybody. And so we can't uh, get away from that fact. Um, the righteous, they lift their eyes up to God amidst all the troubles and turmoil. And the acknowledgement of God's greatness makes them humble and free from self-seeking. Um, so have you ever experienced that in your life where you've humbled yourself and you've just experienced that exaltation from God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Every time uh, we get into a situation where we are humbled, yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's there's an uplifting spiritual counterpoint to it, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I like what it says too in the Psalm 131. You know, it says uh, verse two. It says, "Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul," yeah. and that's an important aspect, perhaps, of it also. Mm -hmm. We need to. You know, I want to zoom in on that word weaned child because with that comes an anticipation of maturity. Yeah. Um, the child is potty trained. Yeah. That's one aspect of maturity. weaning, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The child is not being breastfed anymore and is able to eat solid food. That's mm -hmm. another aspect of weaning. Yeah. And so sometimes we look at this from perspective of we have arrived. Mm -hmm. we'll never see that. Do we ever arrive here on this earth? 
what are we weaned from? And I'm saying this with intent because some people may feel that if God is my parent, then I want to be weaned of God. Mm -hmm. Do you ever want to be weaned of God? No. no. And yet okay. God expects us to be his co-laborers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so this, this um, wording here, it's a common word. It's used throughout the book of Genesis. You know, Joseph was weaned and, and Moses was weaned and so on. That is used there. But the idea there is interesting. It's not only um, arriving at the stage you don't need your mother. It's also when you are well fed, mm -hmm. when mother has fed you and now she puts you off to sleep because you're well fed, the same term is being used. Mm -hmm. You see? And so when I'm looking at this verse, what I see is not just, okay, I'm grown up and I don't need you anymore. No. Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied with how you fed me. Mm -hmm. I am full. I have enough. And because of that, I'm at peace. I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. You see. Mm -hmm. I was reading that the uh, Hebrew word for, for weaned actually means to become a person uh, in this instance. And some societies actually have apparently a weaning ceremony when a mm -hmm. child is old enough that he starts making his own decisions then they have mm -hmm. a weaning ceremony for it. Mm -hmm. And so the word there is gimel, which is actually the fourth letter in Hebrew alphabet. So mm -hmm. it, it does have that meaning of yeah. identity, but also has a meaning of a ripe fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, So it's a multiple meanings of this gimel here. But the interesting thing here, it's accepting, it's a reward of responsibility. And in that ceremony that you're mentioning, mm -hmm. when you become a person, you're rewarded with responsibility. You become a responsible person, not just any person. You become a responsible person. Because you're making your own decisions right. and being responsible right. for it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what person is. Mm -hmm. You see, um, yeah. you are living according to the covenant yourself already. Mm -hmm. You see. When I think about like the, the children and childhood and the weaning, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, mm -hmm. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Um, so when you, you, you want to go to that level of responsibility where you put away those childish things, and you want to experience that weaning where you're now off the rudiments of the world, and now you're on the doctrines and truths of Christ. Not the milk, sincere milk of the Word, but the actual deep stuff, and the deep stuff which nourishes you and strengthens you and grows you to where you have that deep abiding relationship. Mm -hmm that can get you through the tough trials and tribulations, especially mm -hmm. what's going to come, which is the Sunday law. Yeah. And, and perhaps an interesting aspect here is that that what defines a spiritually mature person, calmness mm -hmm. in, in the face of trouble. Yeah. Because as Randy pointed out to that courage in waiting, mm -hmm. right? Not losing heart. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing is not to panic. Mm -hmm. When trouble comes, it's natural to get scared. Mm -hmm. What is important is not to panic. Mm -hmm. And that's why verse 2 says, Surely I have calmed and quieted my soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it works well end in end with that. Mm -hmm. And you're pointing out an interesting <clears throat> aspect. It's actually active calming and quieting the soul. Yeah. yeah. It, it's his doing. He receives that calm and quiet willingly. You see, he quiets his soul. It's a deliberate effort, basically, mm -hmm. to try to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and this waiting is connected again with that expectation and hope. Verse 3, O Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forever. Mm -hmm. So waiting and hoping and expecting, they're, they're closely interconnected. And so maybe uh, one who is perhaps not spiritually weaned, as those to speak, Maybe someone who's not really have, doesn't really have that hope in God. Maybe doesn't have, hasn't really cultivated that that sincere hope, and they're still stuck in the world and probably still engaged here in the world more so. Maybe it's a thought or a theory I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you you bring a bigger issue as to the root and cause of anxieties, mm -hmm. because notice what Jesus invited us. Mm -hmm. If you're stressed, mm -hmm. come to me. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you what? I'll give you the rest. The rest mm -hmm. that you need. Mm -hmm. I like the way the quarterly expresses it too. It says, mm -hmm. this passage portrays a mature faith mm -hmm. that has been tried and tested by the hardships of life mm -hmm. and has found God to be faithful and true to his mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's also relying on the experiences that we have with God, knowing that He will come through. Mm. See. Mm -hmm. um, let me also read the Psalm 123. It was referred in the lesson, and it's, it's important there. Mm -hmm. Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until He has mercy on us. Mm -hmm. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us. And so it's a relational aspect of being calm in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And remember when we studied the mercy and grace and we saw how interchangeable that is, in the Hebrew mind, mm -hmm. that it's in the eyes of God that you receive His favor. Mm -hmm. It's in the, in the embrace of God that mm -hmm. you experience His mercy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know that His love will run after you and chase you continually. Mm -hmm. You know, your goodness is running after me. And it's that hesed. Mm -hmm. And so even here, it says, I'm looking, God, because I want you to look at me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to me, that's beautiful because waiting in the presence of God is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one more comment about this whole maturity business. I, I've been reflecting on listening video blog recently, and the guy was asking questions about spiritual maturity. Mm -hmm. And the other guy gave an answer that I could totally relate to. But my wife is at work, mm -hmm. and I'm running about church business and so on can't wait for the time when I'm picking her up mm -hmm. because I want to be with her. Mm -hmm. And if I'm away from her, I can't wait to get again in her presence. Mm -hmm. And while away, I'm not concerned about am I right, am I wrong? Mm -hmm. You see, I simply live knowing who I am, mm -hmm. who am I in relationship with. And when I get into that relationship, I know that her presence makes me a better man, mm -hmm. keeps me accountable. Same thing should be with God. Instead of us wondering, am I measuring up to this standard or this standard, or this standard? Simply be in His presence and relax, okay? Mm -hmm. Sandra, that's what she tells me. Those who know us as a couple, she says, relax, Alex. Mm -hmm. She calls me Sashka, relax, Sashka. Mm -hmm. And see, sometimes maybe we need to hear that from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be in my presence and relax, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come, let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. We're going, going to continue with uh, the Psalm 126. And maybe I should just read that as an introduction. It says, when the Lord uh, turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And then they said among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us where we are glad. Turn again our captivity, Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And so this is a, an interesting uh, metaphor that's being used, uh, bringing in the sheaves. Why do you think it, the psalmist is using this metaphor in this case? Mm. Any ideas? Well, the whole concept of harvest has been very popular throughout the Bible, pointing out that we would be gathered in that heavenly harvest, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Jesus would use this metaphor mm -hmm. of harvest, mm -hmm. and the Hebrew feasts were staged with the concept of end time harvest. What's interesting that even the spring feast have to do with the harvest. You have a first fruit, the sheaf, right? Mm -hmm. That they would shake because barley is ripe. Mm -hmm. And then in the fall, mm -hmm. when they're collecting all the fruits harvest, so it's still harvest imagery. Mm -hmm. So I think to me, uh, harvest imagery is from beginning to the end of the Bible pointing out to Christ's second coming, mm -hmm. right? And that's why here I see these Sheaves. Was the harvest a big deal to them, do you think, in, in back in the days of ancient Israel? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it's big. It was connected with the Hafiz and times of jub Jubilee. But but big also because if you don't harvest, you'll die. Yeah, you don't yeah. eat, yeah. yeah. Right. Don't work, yeah. you don't eat, yeah. It's North Europeans that invented pickling and all that. Mm -hmm. I don't think Jews did much pickling. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't help but uh, read this passage without singing, thinking about the song, Bringing the Sheaves. Mm -hmm. uh, and you tend to think of that as sort of a farmer's song. But when you read the words to it, I'm just going to read uh, one or two verses here of it. It has a lot of direct meaning. You can tell it's taken directly from this passage in Psalm. The first verse says, Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest. So here's this element of waiting again. Mm -hmm. In the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And then verse 3 goes on, going forth with weeping. So there's an element of difficulty here. Yeah. Sowing for the master. Though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. Mm -hmm. Okay, When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Mm -hmm. So you, it brings us back to... Uh, Ancient Israel, uh, when they came back from the captivity mm -hmm. in, in Babylon and such, and uh, it's, it, there's allusions to this return from captivity to be a joyous occasion, the same as it was when they were celebrating bringing in the sheaves. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring an interesting point that this song is when they returned mm -hmm. from their captivity back to Zion. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, who were the sheaves back then? And, and probably question to us, mm -hmm. what does it mean to bring the sheaves? What are the sheaves that we are to bring into the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. You know, Tuesday morning, we're on Zoom prayer at 7 a.m. And that became really a deep conversation. Oh. Mm -hmm. Who are the sheaves? Well, the sheaves were the grain itself, basically. So the fruit of their labors was, mm -hmm. were the sheaves. What, are the, what is the fruit of our labor mm -hmm. in this world? And so as we look spiritually, allegorically, who are our mm -hmm. sheaves? Mm -hmm. It's all those we work for to mm -hmm. try okay. to bring salvation to. And this is where my mm -hmm. response is, my immediate sheaves should be my family, mm -hmm. my kids. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we're like, well, we as a church need to go out there and bring the sheaves in. Well, are we preserving the sheaves in-house? Mm -hmm. How's our retention? Mm -hmm. How's our children? walking in the truth that we know yeah because quite often you hear people who say well i'm the fourth generation and they're gone from the church they're they're mm -hmm. yeah there's a strange thing going on because it seems to be we're very outward focused and evangelism focused but oftentimes our own families are the ones that are lacking and going hungry for spiritual nurture yeah and so this notice what caught my attention and we all know the song that uh, randy read who so in tears continually goes forth weeping. Mm -hmm. um, th there are tears, and these are not tears of joy yet. Mm -hmm. These tears will turn to joy when we see the benefits of the work. Yeah. But while working and laboring, there are tears, tears of pain. Yeah, yeah. Even with our family, as we're trying to bring them to, into God's kingdom, it's not always easy. There's difficulties and, mm -hmm. and trials that we run across. And we have to get down to a lot of prayer and a lot of uh, serious thinking and, and work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, the, the seed is the Word of God. And every time we plant that seed and we go through this experience of witnessing and stuff, you find people um, sometimes don't even have a, like what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Just try making a YouTube video and putting it online about a hot topic and yeah. doing, addressing it biblically. Yeah. Watch the hate that comes. It's, it's fascinating. And so the seed that we sow, the word of God is to be sown in the heart. And we're promised that it will bear fruit. In some sense or way, it will bear fruit and change lives. Mm -hmm. You know, as you mentioned this, Ben, mm -hmm. this week is historic for us. Mm -hmm. We have reached 1,000 subscribers officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at 1K. <laughs> but to think, how long did it take for us to get there? Yeah. You started YouTube channel back in when? Way before my time. Yeah, I don't remember. The so yeah. I think it was over a decade mm -hmm. that this church slowly keep building up the momentum mm -hmm. to reach that 1,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. So we have more subscribers than actually physical members of this church, and it's great. Mm -hmm. But if we continue producing, yeah, there may be some tears and weeping. Yeah. 
but there would be more subscribers. I hope we could double this year before the end of the year to, to reach 2K and keep building, you see. Be nice. Because this digital footprint is also sowing seeds. Mm -hmm. It's it's witnessing online, producing the digital uh, material. Yeah. 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 And, and, and the thing is, when you follow the right approaches, what happens is when you input or you invest and you sit there and wait, um, and you'll see growth happen. Mm -hmm. um, you, you rest peacefully in that you watch it grow. Just this last, was it a week and a half, I've seen my subscribers go up from 110. And so that was just following certain principles and being observant. Mm -hmm. And when I applied principles and was observant, I actually was able to grow a couple every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. So it was amazing to me to see that. And so what I watched, I literally, I took out my phone, and I would watch every couple hours. Oh, another 10 subscribers. Oh, two, four. I was like, whoa, that was really mm -hmm. cool. Just don't get addicted to watching the yeah, lights, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but right. uh, Randy, you asked about the harvest. Uh, it just occurred to me that in story of Joseph, remember with his father and brothers, mm -hmm. in vision, what did he see? Sheaves. Sheaves, yeah. Bowing down yes, to okay. him as a sheave. So this concept of humans as sheaves mm -hmm. is not something invented they, they knew their Torah, they knew the stories of patriarchs, and, and perhaps that imagery of people as sheaves mm -hmm. even comes from that Joseph dream. Mm -hmm. That may be true. Yeah. And uh, the quarterly, I like what it says here, the image of sowing in tears and reaping in joy is a powerful promise of divine leading from a difficult present to a joyful future. Mm -hmm. And I keep emphasizing, the first sheaves that I want to be in the heavenly harvest, my family, my children. Mm -hmm. That's the sheaves that I would be most glad about. Mm -hmm. Got to be our priority, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. There, there are many other sheaves that we have to harvest then, mm -hmm. and that's great. And imagine if our children, from being just sheaves, become weaned, mature personalities in themselves, get involved in the great harvest, you yeah. know instead of being the liability, yeah. become now the contributing, responsible mm -hmm. harvesters themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that okay. depends on sowing good seed. Because mm -hmm. if you sow a strange seed, that'll <laughs> grow up a weird, nasty crop, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so as much as you may water it with that Holy Spirit, uh, you, what were you going to get? Who knows? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We're moving on to Wednesday lesson. Waiting in God's Sabbath rest. And I find two interesting things kind of leading us also into the next day's lesson, which focuses on the morning. Mm -hmm. Because as we look at Psalm 92, and I will read uh, also just the introduction. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning mm -hmm. and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, and on the harp with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the work of your hands. And as you go through this psalm, you see this concept that God has done His works. You see? And we could simply triumph in the works of God. Okay? Now, um, Sabbath, ideally, mm -hmm. is the triumph of God's work. Mm -hmm. When you look back at Genesis, God works, He creates, mm -hmm. and then He rests from His works. Mm -hmm. But that rest is not rest of being tired, it's a rest of triumph. He has accomplished everything, mm -hmm. you see. And now He sets apart, sanctifies, makes the time special, Mm -hmm. that we could also rejoice with Him in His works, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And from even before us we're talking about, perhaps when we understand that even our character improvement is not our work, mm -hmm. but whose work is it? God's work. His Spirit. work yep. in us. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's coming to understand it's not about our works, mm -hmm. it's about rejoicing in His works. Mm -hmm. And then that implies there's some sort of response or action to be had at the reception of that, because we're co-laborers together with God. 
Mm -hmm. We're going to, you know, as we're wait, as we're waiting and resting, we're rejoicing. And that implies all actions, right, too. So there, there's a blending, right, mm -hmm. between faith and works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the lesson brings this question of God's Sabbath rest. How do you take it? Mm -hmm. As you look to Psalm 92, mm -hmm. it does not bring really strongly the, the Sabbath language even here. Yeah, I was having difficulty actually relating this to the Sabbath. I was wondering mm -hmm. how... How is this author really drawing the Sabbath out of this? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, verse 13. But then I noticed he goes on a little later. It talks about uh, uh, sort of an Eden-type living arrangement at near mm -hmm. the end where it says, yeah. you know, the cedars of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They shall go forth with fruit in old age, etc., etc. So I guess it's, it's, it's uh, working itself more towards uh, God's kingdom eventually. Mm-hmm. And when, it, when we're thinking about waiting on the Lord and rest, you see that word planted, that it be planted in the house of the Lord. You think about a tree, when you plant it, does it move? It shouldn't, right? Mm -hmm. It should stay in the ground. It's planted. And rooted. you understand that this is allegorical yeah. because there are no plants in the yeah. house of the Lord. Yeah. In a temple, they had no trees. Yeah, yeah. So this is the allegory that yeah. you bring up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also verse 10, it says, I found it interesting. It says, anointed with fresh oil. Now, why doesn't it just say anointed with oil? Why does it say fresh oil? What's the difference? Um, mm -hmm. well, interesting perspective mm -hmm. there, uh, because notice the bread was fresh every Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They had to refresh the bread. Mm -hmm. They had to squeeze and prepare oil every so frequently, yeah. because even the oil, you know, needs yeah, to be exactly. refreshed. Okay, mm -hmm. could get stagnant and so on. You get the idea maybe of renewal. Of, a, of your life, Very renewed true. devotion to God's service, Very and recon true. reconsecration mm -hmm. of your life as a servant in God's work. Mm -hmm. God yeah. wants to anoint us with the, that oil of gladness to refresh ourselves, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's perhaps it. You know, whenever um, you know, you eat some fresh bread, or my my sister in law made um, some food today, and it was fresh and tasty, and it brought joy to my life. And so there's that time when we have that that that. That waiting on the Lord also brings that joy when we're planted in God's house, being freshened and anointed mm -hmm. by Him. Yeah. And here's the thing. As we're talking about Sabbath, it seems there's no direct allusion yeah. to the Sabbath. But when we talk about house of God, when mm -hmm. we talk about paradise, Eden, yeah. we're connecting it to Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, Sabbath is a reminder for us of the time in Eden, mm -hmm. of the time before sin of the time when our connection with God was uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully even today, the Sabbath being temple in time serves for us just as that, as a reminder where we belong, as a reminder in whose work and in whose strength mm -hmm. we're uh, being nourished and being, you know, upheld. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God created it as a special time each week when we should spend time with Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, in Jewish tradition, I don't think we could ever exceed their Sabbath keeping or Sabbath celebration. Mm -hmm. And yet, the Sabbath keeping Jewish people did some unthinkable things to Jesus our Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They walked away from the cross on Sabbath mm -hmm. because they didn't want to break the Sabbath. Okay, they even had to interrupt the anointing process to lay him in a grave for the sake of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and yet they missed the point that the Lord of the Sabbath was in their midst. Yeah, and I'm saying this because we could create an environment where we're so busy doing church, and Jesus is not in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see. What good is Sabbath if it's filled with all kinds of activities, but the end, we're more tired and drained mm -hmm. than before, mm -hmm. you know? And it's easy to fall into that trap where you get so busy with doing this and this, things that you think are important to get done and important to God that you detract from that special time you should have to be with Him, to be with your family. Yeah. Yeah. Any other reflections on the Sabbath? Um, I just wanted to highlight this for you. Um, in Leviticus mm -hmm. chapter 23, 
there's an interesting verse. Verse 32. It says, you shall celebrate your Sabbath. And in my Bible, that's highlighted. Because we should do what on Sabbath? Celebrate. Celebrate. Mm -hmm. Not just observe or keep. <clears throat> the language is used is not, not that of a burden mm -hmm. to bear, mm -hmm. but a celebration to enjoy. It's something we need to look forward to each week mm -hmm. that day. And I think in heaven, that's what it will be like. All week long, we will be looking forward to that great day when we'll <laughs> be present in, in with the mm -hmm. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and all the angels of heaven. Yeah. It'll be the highlight of the week, not something that we're, uh, you don't wake up and say, oh, I got to go this now, this week mm -hmm. this, to church, you know. <laughs> and this is where I go back to Psalm 27. It says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, one thing that I will seek. For those who love gospel music, you know the song by Marvin Sapp, one thing, mm -hmm. that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, some translations say delightfulness of the Lord, okay? And that goes back to what we talked already. I'm just kind of recapping. Remember, delight yourself in the Lord. And so, to me, what Wednesday highlighted is while we're waiting in God's Sabbath rest, we're experiencing the joy of His presence. We're experiencing the delight, the beauty of God. And so, again, looking at the global picture, what we're talking about here, God has worked out your salvation. Mm -hmm. God is working out every detail in your life. Mm -hmm. Psalmist says, the steps of a righteous man are ordered from above. Mm -hmm. What do you have to stress about? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Just trust God. Lean not on your understanding. Just give yourself to Him. Mm -hmm. And He will organize your life that it becomes more than just weekly Sabbath. You're living in the Sabbath rest. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to be careful that we don't fall into that evangelical trap that, oh, my Sabbath is every day now. Mm -hmm. There is still a significant day, which is a sign between mm -hmm. us and God. Yeah. But interesting what's been said of Jews who kept the weekly Sabbath, but failed to enter God's rest. Mm -hmm. mm. You see? Yeah. And so we could do the same thing. We could keep our weekly Sabbath mm. and show up to Sabbath school and sit through the worship mm -hmm. and fail to enter God's rest mm -hmm. in our mind, in, in our lifestyle. Mm. Yeah, so we go through all the formalities of the Sabbath, what we think is the Sabbath. Mm -hmm but we really don't have an appreciation for the purpose behind it. Yeah, and this is where we have to go from the letter to the Spirit mm -hmm. and understand the importance of the Sabbath in our lives. Psalm chapter 5, verse 3. Let's go there, guys, as we look at joy comes in the morning. Psalm chapter 5, verse 3 says, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about joy coming in the morning in context with this particular text, what we should do when we rise up in the morning is pray and seek God. And, and when, I, when I look at that, that should bring joy into our life. Um, if you look at the different aspects of it, in case you may not be um, familiar with these things, is that when you get up in the morning and you pray, it gives you a piece of serenity and, and it basically rest is what we're studying in our heart. And then when you go into the Word, it gives you that joy of maybe finding a new truth or finding some new insight that you mm -hmm. didn't know before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use the expression, expression too, you know, uh, like the long night of darkness when we talk about the nighttime mm -hmm. before the morning. And, and usually, you know, we think associate the night with troubles, don't mm -hmm. we? And the Bible does that also. It associates the darkness and the nighttime with when troubles come. And even uh, even in real life, of course, that's when crime occurs, most of it, and yeah. a lot of different things like that. So the morning represents sudden a suddenly uh, the emergence of the sun and the light and that's what brings about the joy the long night is over the trouble part is over here we are now in the joy of the morning with the sun coming out and shining in our lives you yeah, know? and the darkness is the absence of light and god is light he's joy and he's love and when you don't have god in your life no joy no peace mm -hmm. and the it's, morning is is a and the morning is obviously when the sun rises up and you get that light mm -hmm. yeah it's interesting that when you go to the book of Genesis, when does the day begin? That's uh, 
Another tricky question. It's the first day. Or no, it's the second Wednesday. day you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, in the evening. Yeah. And then there was oh. evening and the evening morning. morning was the you have Erev yeah. and Boker. Yeah. And so technically, the day begins in the evening. Mm -hmm. And morning is a continuation of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't have a good night's sleep, how is your morning? It's, it's a grumpy morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if you're preparing for your day by going to bed extra early, mm -hmm. then your morning's going to be earlier. You're going to mm -hmm. be more productive. Mm -hmm. My youngest tells me a few times because he tried that, where he goes to bed actually at nine, mm -hmm. and his day is more productive. He's more refreshed. Mm -hmm. But if you are killing your day from the beginning, from the evening mm -hmm. into the night, mm -hmm then the rest of the day is messed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we're our worst killjoy. And so notice, I'm pulling Psalm 119, verse mm -hmm. 147. It says, I rise before dawn. Mm -hmm. Okay? So to them, morning was not just 7 or 8 or 9. It was mm -hmm. before sunrise. Mm -hmm. um, Randy mentioned history, reading about pioneers. I was surprised when I was reading about the lifestyle in the 19th century. Before they had electricity, they function during the daylight. Mm -hmm. So when sun sets, what they do? It was time for sleep. They went to sleep. Yeah. And so if you go to sleep 6 p.m., you're done sleeping by midnight. Yeah. So sometimes they would wake up in the middle of the night and they would do reading and writing and other things. Mm -hmm. And you find sometimes Ellen White writing that she woke up in the middle of the night. Yeah, mm -hmm. because they went to bed early. Mm -hmm. And so they would interrupt their night by waking up, reading, praying, writing sometimes with a little candle, and then going back to sleep mm -hmm. until the sunrise. So their lifestyles are different. Mm -hmm. We're stressed today with so much, mm -hmm. all the digital devices, and we're staying up late, and we're waking up extra early, and we have enough sleep, mm -hmm. okay? But then when we wake up, what's our practice in the morning? As we're looking here, what should be our practice in the morning? Yeah, so it should be, it should be prayer and study. Joy comes yeah, joy. in the morning. Mm -hmm. Where do we find joy? In God. In God. Mm -hmm. If He's the one we're in love with, then the first time we wake up our eyes, yeah, it's like we look for Him. Yeah. Yeah. We we'll spend time with Him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so my invitation to those who are listeners here, um, Try a new practice. When you wake up in the morning, seek that joy of communing with God. Okay? Seek that joy of spending time in prayer, spending time talking to God before you even begin your day mm -hmm. and see how much it would change your day. Mm -hmm. You see? So why is the great event of the coming resurrection referred to as the resurrection morning. We morning. hear that all the time mm -hmm. as a phrase. And the time before is going to be uh, trouble and tribulation, mm -hmm. and it's compared with a dark night, Midnight. right? Right. Um, so it's, it's a time of joy suddenly. Right, yeah. right. And see, even Christ, he's called the morning star. Yeah, the bright and morning star. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Lucifer used to be that, but he... He failed, and now he's the prince of darkness. Mm -hmm. And so the new bright and morning star is, is Christ. Right. And so this imagery of the morning is here interesting for us. It's an invitation to enter the day with God. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I see this lesson. Mind you, we've gone through this book of Psalms, and I enjoyed it. It's been a growing experience for me. Uh, because somehow in the previous times when we studied the book of Psalms, I did not dive deep into it. But this time, as I went through the book of Psalms, discovering some new concept, new words, it helped me to deal with my own emotions, mm -hmm. with my emotional trauma. Mm -hmm. um, seriously, this three months, I've been talking to my sister today, literally, about if we have a buried, unaddressed trauma, mm -hmm. Okay, it could cripple us. Mm -hmm. And as I go through these Psalms, there is so much wisdom and advice of how to move forward and deal with our emotions. Mm -hmm. 
what I really liked about this study, uh, this whole quarterly study, is that in the past I might have gone through the Book of Psalms and just read it, you know, superficially, mm -hmm. glancing over this, mm -hmm. glancing over that. This has sort of forced me to really focus on certain things and get a lot more understanding and information from it because it's a quarterly study than what I would mm -hmm. ordinarily otherwise, you mm -hmm. know. So it's been very beneficial. Yeah, and yes, it's topical, <laughs> just as our next study on Great Controversy would be very topical, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but I wanted to highlight one more verse, Second Peter 1.19. It talks about, until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, while there's a physical morning out there and it's bright light, mm -hmm. is there morning in my heart? Mm -hmm. Is there a light shining in my heart? Because there could be people walking through a bright day with darkness inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have to be careful not to fall into that trap, but to have that mourning in our heart. Right. And we need Jesus in our hearts and lives to have that, um, have that, um, that joy. Um, when I think about um, the mystery of godliness, I think really... To have that that mystery of godliness or that that fruit of godliness come out in the life, we have to have Christ, that joy in our heart. Mm -hmm. And I really think the fruit, the the basis of obedience is that love and joy from God. And you know, if we were trying to obey out of just this that we have to do it, um, it sucks. But if you're obeying God because you love Him, you're having a joyful relationship with Him. It's easy. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, one more comment here, because even resurrection of Jesus occurred mm -hmm. when early morning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at the dawn right yeah. and when we think about second coming we talk about the great resurrection morning morning yeah. Yeah. okay um, and a great waking up morning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so this concept of waking up also is associated with the resurrection itself mm -hmm. joy comes in the morning mm -hmm. because as much as we could experience joy here Randy was talking about, wait for the Lord to show up here. We're ultimately waiting for the final, ultimate joy. Yeah. We're waiting for that great morning when joy will be forever. Mm -hmm. When the sun would shine so bright that we would not need the sun. Yeah. Because God we'll be is the light. bright yeah. light for all of us, you yeah. see. And so as we're ending this book of Psalm. We just touched the tip of the iceberg with all the beauty in the Psalms, with all the subjects that have been addressed here. And uh, my recommendation again, some of you memorize this. Whenever you feel saddened or feel that the presence of the Spirit is not with you, mm -hmm. read the Psalms. Mm -hmm. That would be a primer that would help you perhaps. Mm -hmm to re-engage your emotions, your feelings, mm -hmm. with God's answers for your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we invite you to watch the last segment of Mission Spotlight from India. Because uh, as we're moving into the new quarter, next Sabbath, uh, the highlight would be on Euro-Asian division, or what's left of it after Russia invaded Ukraine two years ago. Um, and we'll talk more about it as we start the great controversy, the war story, mm -hmm. next week. We're going to take a look at your Asian division in more detail. But today, please enjoy this short video about demolishing the dorm and the work that is being done and needs to be done more in India. Welcome to India. If you go to the southern state of Tamil Mandu, we find the city of Thanjavur. For the past 70 years, the E.D. Thomas Memorial Higher Secondary School has been teaching, training, and introducing students and teachers to Christ. Most of our church leaders in this region receive training from this school. The 2,350 students come from a variety of family backgrounds and religions, all longing to get a good education. Most of the children, they're coming from very, very poor background. But it is our duty to uh, give the moral support to the children, building the character building. That is our motto. No one to live in this school without education. 
without god's spiritual power that's what they that is our duty surrounded by other schools this school offers unique values that attract parents there are so many schools around here but parents bring here nearby also parents bring here just because we are teaching discipline and uh, about god due to its age this school faces serious problems with its facilities the girls uh, hostel it is not secure because the building is very old the government very strictly ordered do not have the asbestos seat to roof because it is affect the children the government very strictly ordered to demolish the oldest building and especially in the asbestos seat Miralini is one of the students staying in the girls dorm coming to this school was a challenging experience because she needed to travel far from home even though she didn't come from an adventist background she made good friends in the dorm learned about god and excelled in class she still admits there is room for improvement yeah we need some improvement because the hostel is not with concrete walls it's it oh, as per she in summer they say feeling so hard you have to change this and the toilet is not enough for us we need some more rooms and some facilities there this quarter a portion of your 13th sabbath offering will help renovate the girls dorm at ed thomas memorial higher secondary school providing the students with a safer place to stay please pray for the students and teachers at this school pray that this school can effectively represent christ despite their current situation thank you for supporting 13th sabbath offering for e school Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have given us your holy word, Lord, that we can study and learn. We thank you in particular for the book of Psalms, for those authors who wrote it so long ago, Lord, but yet they address the very issues that we address and face in our lives each day of our lives. And Lord, we pray that uh, as we study, continue to study this book, that uh, we will be inspired, that we will learn more about you, learn more about our walk with you in this life lord and about the uh, joy that is to come through our lord and savior when he returns again for us we ask all these things in jesus wonderful name amen amen, amen.